So all right, so we're going to continue with the subject matter of string, but we're going to look at some of the built-in string methods. I think this I have not sent, have I? Did I? I sent also. Okay. So Python also has a set of built-in functions, and you can actually apply this to a lot of strings. Uh, so one of the function is the strip method. So this one, it actually uh, eliminates any white space from beginning or the end. So for example, if you define a string, all these have given right. All this done right. Strings. So you see that there are white space here, here and also there's some space here. So when you use strip, so how you use this built-in function? So you're using, you're calling the string then you use the dot and you are using the built-in function strip and you are printing the result so therefore you get hello world without any spaces it removes automatically it strips away all these white spaces right that's one this one is of course the same thing lower it actually gives returns all lower Letters this is quite simple, straightforward, right? So all of we can actually explore this. And of course, the same thing in upper. It returns all in upper. Replace. This is quite uh, interesting also. Like for example, you have a particular string and if you want to replace it with another string, so, for example, you can use the string, the replace, uh, replace built-in function. So, here, whenever you want to replace, uh, you have to make sure that you are specifying the spellings correctly. So, it will replace exactly. So, if you, if you, if the string you define as I like apples, let me enlarge this. Then, you can actually use this built-in function replace. The first one is, of course, what you want to replace with what. So if you do this, then you're replacing apples with pineapples. So this is replace. Then you have or have this method uh, known as swap case. So this is swap. So if it's lower, then it'll make it uh, uppercase. If uppercase, then it'll make it lowercase. So swap case. So you can see the H was capital, but now it's lower, E, L, L, O was small, lowercase, and now it's uppercase. Then you also you have this method known as split. So, but for this split, you need to uh, specify the separator. What is the separator? So you're using the split, but you need to provide what is the separator. So the Python knows what it's supposed to look for to split. So here you're using comma. So when when it sees comma, then it will split. So you see, it actually gives a, a list. And do you notice that it splits inclusive of the space before the hitch? So that comma becomes a splitting point. So these are some of the commonly used uh, Python string methods. We have capitalized. So the descriptions are there. This is quite uh, clear. Did I give up to this point? This table is there, so right. Capitalize, find, uh, but this find actually returns uh, the, the index value. It returns the position. So this one, if it's alphanumeric, is it decimal, is it lower, is it upper? This one converts to lower. This one returns a tuple. We will see what's a tuple. So you can understand how, what is a tuple, list and dictionaries. We will, we haven't come to that point yet. So we'll come there. This replace, we have seen the replace. It's R fine. Uh, this one, you can actually uh, search for a specified value and return uh, the index of it. 
split we have seen it split lines starts with you are checking with this starts with or not then strip we have seen that swap case title uh, converts the first case into upper case this is like a title and upper this upper so here are some of the uh, did I provide this code also as well so you will see capitalize it should get capitalized find O so this is always start index with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it will return index 4. Hello, 1, 2, 3. Is it alpha numeric? True or false? True, right. The alpha and also numeric, 1, 2, 3. Hello, asterisk, is it number? No, it's not. This one is it decimal? True. 2034. It's a decimal value, right? Python lower means it's checking is it lower? No, it's not lower because so why? The P is capital, right? Python is upper. It's checking is it upper? Yes. So it returns true. Python is it lower? So it will return false. Oh, sorry, this is not is lower. Sorry, my bad. This is actually using the method lower, so you'll actually it'll make it lower. It's not is lower. Is lower means it'll return false. This is uh, using the method lower, so changing it to lower. So this one partition T, so it will partition. So using the T, so it'll partition the tuples. We will see what the tuples are, upcoming point. So this is where we did the uh, replace just now. Learn, replace with learned. Fine. Uh, see, this is returns the index. So we want to see where's the SC. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Starting index 5. So split. Now split, you didn't put anything. So what it means? This is actually space, right? So, splits. Sir, yeah. For partition, uh -huh. uh, it, does it only affect the, let's say there are multiple keys in a string. It will do that for all. Wherever, that, that means T becomes like the, the point where you create the partition. This one? Yeah, I, oh, you mean you type further right? Yeah, I, I only wrote Python Python uh, to test the Let's see the description for the partition. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So here I think uh, the partitioning only happens once. So you're defining what is the uh, identifier for that partitioning. So that's why if you use like Python, Python, it sees the first T and then it creates a partition one shot. So that means it always creates a partition of in three, but now you're defining the identifier to where to create the partition. So that's why in your case, if you write Python, Python, the first T identifies and it creates Pi, T, and then whatever the remaining. So it always creates the three kind of partitions. Okay. Good, good, good to ex experiment.
Now this one is also uh, you're using three times double quote. This is for multi-line strings. Do you realize? Do you realize how this is a multi-line string? Usually, you cannot. If you write like this, double quote, then if you say learn Python, then you want to line another line, right? See, it changes color. It, it doesn't detect that as a, a string. So, if you want to write multi-line, so you use three times. Like this, three double quote. Then you can actually type. Oh, sorry. Whatever until it sees back the end of another three lines. So whatever comes in between, you'll take it as a uh, multi-line string, the one go. But here you're using the split lines, so it will split based on that line. So that means this is. First line, this is the second line. So if you write something like this, do you see? It separates for every line. First line, second line, third line. Is that okay? So this is split line. This one is, I think, starts with D, uh, so it returns true. It's checking with. This is strip, we have seen it before, it will remove the white space. This is swap case, we have seen this also already. So swap case only affects uh, letters, not numbers. So this is title, so it will uh, capitalize starting of each word. But there is an also issue here, right? But right, you need for title, four is usually will be small. This is upper, you've seen this already, same thing. So I'll share this, uh, there's a lot of readings that you can actually check when you click this, that's under the Python tutorial, the link, there's a lot of uh, information that you can actually read about on Python's, what are the uh, arguments, what is the, the keyword, what is the explanation behind it, alright, this is on the Python. So the link is actually the URL link, so when you click I will also uh, will share you the HTML uh, file of this. So when you open it, it will open web browser, uh, but then you can actually click on the link as well. So we have gone through uh, Okay, let me just use this one so you can see better. So next we actually want to, uh, this will be the, the final topic for today. And then we'll continue on Friday, the remaining one. So, so far we have learned all, all these various kinds of uh, operators and also strings and how do you actually manipulate the string, the steps, the, the stride, the slicing, how to do the indexing and things like that. So now we're coming to an uh, important aspect as well, especially when it comes to the conditional statement and also the iteration, right? So now we're slowly stepping into the uh, programming element of coming up with some coding which takes some input and some output. And whenever you write a particular code, there will be some points that you want to take some decisions in your coding, yes or true, uh, yes or no statements. So to actually make a decisions, we have to use what we call as conditional statements. So the conditions, you have seen this before uh, in C programming, you have the if, uh, else if, and also else. Right, the if statement, you can actually uh, be used alone, 
you can always just check if the, it fulfills a particular condition, then you do. But both uh, else if and else statements, they have to be accompanied with an if statement. If statement by, by uh, alone, it can actually work. But the else if and else, it has to be together with the if. So the if statement is, uh, is of course, is the simplest one. You're just checking the condition. If it fulfills the condition, then you print out or you perform the whatever statement. If not, something's wait, hold on. So you can see a statement one following the if statement is indented. Actually, Bharat is supposed to be indent here. It's not uh, same line as if. Indentation in uh, Python is very important. Indentation in Python is very, very important. And also the colon. Uh, there's some typo here. I'll correct the, the, the tab. So you can see the statement one following the if statement is indented. We can have more not only if you fulfill the condition, doesn't mean that you can only execute one statement, you can execute several statements. But all those statements must be uh, indented. So if you look down, this is what I meant. So if you have an if statement, it, if statement, you must complete it with a colon. You have to complete it with a colon. And the statement has to be indented. This is very, very important in terms of Python syntax. If you don't in give the indentation, it will give an error. So you can have as many statements as you want, but all should be in intended the same space. I think this one I have not given to you, all right? So statements are indented the same amount after the colon. And whatever statement, if it fulfills, then it, it will be run. In this case, if the condition is false, and all those statements and following statements, they, are, they won't be executed. Because this is if right. If it's true, then you do. If it's not true, then nothing. So this is the flowchart for the if true. So you have the condition you're checking. If it's true, then you execute whatever states. Of course, if it's false, then you can execute some other statements and things like that. But for the if statements, you're only checking if. So it only goes one side. If you want to check for the condition, if it's false, then you can go this side. So you need to have two if statement, right? If you want to check for both conditions. In this case, if you're only using if. Of course, we can actually easily overcome this by using the else or else if. Right? We will see that later. So here, we can actually uh, use an example uh, by using student's marks. So, the requirement is for particular subject, the mark should not exceed 100%, right? The assessment is 100, 100 is maximum marks. So, we want to display a warning or error message if the marks exceeded 100. So, here in this case, the requirement is what? If whatever marks is more than 100, then you want to produce a error message. So in this case, the if statement, you only need to have if. Because you only have one condition, right? If it is more than 100, give some error message. So in that case, you write, type this code. Of course, this code doesn't uh, prompt user's input, right? Not yet. 
the upcoming one, we'll see how we can actually get input from user. So here we are just defining obtain marks is equal to 120. Here we are checking if obtain marks, if it's more than 100, colon, don't forget this colon, and don't forget this indentation. Then you print invalid marks. So this is very simple. Definitely you'll get invalid marks, right? As a print statement. Type this and the next next one you can just copy and paste for you to manipulate. Everyone done? Okay, can, can we go to the next one or still typing? Done. Oops. So take note that again, the colon after the if marks obtained is very, very important because that's what separates the, the if and uh, if condition with the statement. So if you, for, if you forget to write the colon, because now the slightly the syntax is different, right? In C programming, sometimes you used to write semicolon at every statement. This is not required, this is a slightly different syntax. So for if condition, the colon is required for you to separate the, uh, the, the condition and also the statement to be executed. So in this case, of course, the condition is met, then it fulfills. If it's false, then of course, nothing. So you can actually use conditional arithmetic or any other operators also to specify a particular uh, condition, larger than, smaller than, equals, or any other operator. Now what we want to do is, earlier we didn't prompt user input. Now we want to how can we actually use the, the function to prompt the var uh, variable from the user? So we can actually ask the user to enter the marks. So how can we do that? So first what we write, we write print input marks of a student. And then you see that this one, this, this method input is actually a, met, uh, a function just like how you seen, sorry, it's a built-in function just like how you have seen earlier, like this, do you see? Upper is actually a built-in function known as the upper method. So always the method, it has the keyword and also the square bracket. So here the keyword and the square bracket is input. So what we're doing, we just print input marks of a student. Then it will wait to get the input. So after you get the input, then it will check. Now, the input function here, the method here, whatever that you type, it actually captures it as string. It captures it as string but we need to convert it into integer. So that's what we do. We write this, we use integer and put it in bracket. So we'll convert that string into integer. Why we need to convert integer? Because here you're using a comparator operator, right? If you are comparing with number, then you cannot compare string with number. So that's why you need to convert it to integer. And then you check, is the number larger or not? So check, see now it prompts for when this square uh, box comes because we have this input. So let's say if we put, um, 
110 then enter so it gives invalid marks So what if, if I put lower, for example, 80, there's no other output that's coming out. Is this okay? Everyone got it? So if you fulfill the condition, which is if it's more than 100, then of course it'll, it'll print invalid. If it's less, it won't execute this line. So this is what I, I was saying just now, that the input function takes the input from the users and it actually saves it as string. So that's why we use the integer bracket to actually convert the string into integer. So that's the important thing. So finally, I think we can just do this uh, else statement. So as I mentioned earlier, the else statement, you cannot use it alone. If statement can. So it always comes with if. So for example, uh, sorry, uh, again, here is supposed to be indented, in, indented. It's supposed to be indented. So using the, the markdown HTML tag, so I just need to do some correction here. So this one, if we fulfill certain conditions then do else this is the if it's not true so let's say for example uh, if we want to display the message excellent if the obtained marks so let's say you have the condition here if the student marks are greater are 80 or greater then you want to display the message excellent if it's less than that, then we want to display the message not excellent. Oh wait, this one maybe you should should try. Try, try to type this and come and check. Uh, take note that for if and also else must have the colon. Okay, do and call me, I'll come and check. I think this is the last one. This is the last one. So each way, every one of you who have done, then you can actually leave. Okay, I'll stop the recording because uh, we'll end here. This is for you to do and show me and then you can actually leave. Yes.